Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is I'm Jason, and welcome to another edition of the Jason Show. This morning, my guest will be William Giddens, right? Yeah, Giddings. Uh, uh, William Giddings. Uh, met William this morning walking around town, Ukiah, uh, around the farmers market area, and we're going to talk to him today uh, about homelessness. William's 40. He was homeless for many years. He was a heavy alcoholic for many years. This morning he's telling me that he has been clean for 190 days, so a good chunk of the year, uh, pretty much for the first time in his life. And he's got a different perception on things, but he's got a lot of stories to tell and a lot of interesting things uh, to, to hear about. Uh, from William about life on the street and life in Northern California and in Denver. And so I'd like to w welcome William Giddings to the show. William? Yeah, how you doing, buddy? Great. Thanks so much for coming in. Oh, not a problem. So, um, so let's see. Well, why don't you tell us first, what year were you born, where were you born, and where did you grow up as a child? Uh, I was born here in Ukiah back in 1970. All right. Uh, homegrown from here. And went to school at Ukiah High School in South Valley. And, uh, Did you graduate? No. I'm in the midst right now. I'm uh, start school in August. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my GED and uh, get my degree in uh, mechanics. Okay. Uh, since I quit drinking, my whole life has uh, done a 360. Uh-huh. Uh, finally getting my butt back in school and uh, got off the streets. Uh, got a good place to work at. Got a good place to live at now. Uh-huh. Uh, just able to get my head out of my butt, you know, huh. and get things done. Now, you say you've been sober for a half a year. Yes. Roundabouts. But you've been off the streets for three. Yes. So you got inside while yeah. you were still drinking. Yeah. How did you manage that? Just got lucky or worked hard at it or got sober well, enough just, for a minute? That was just my way of living. I mean, I picked up that bottle from the morning, from the day I, I mean, from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed. How much did you drink a day? About a gallon a day. About a gallon a day. Yeah. So a half gallon just wouldn't do it. Well, no. Because after a while, when you drink like that for so long, it's where your body, you drink, you don't drink to get drunk the first part of it. You drink so you get the shakes off and all that because it becomes a physical need. The shakes come every morning? Yeah. When that, you drink that hard? It, it, it caused me seizures. It, it was a rough, it was a very rough road. So you drank a half a gallon of vodka in the morning and a half a gallon of vodka at night. Yeah, basically. And you, how much money did you have to spend every day to keep up this gallon vodka habit? I did 20, 25 bucks a day. 20, 25 I bucks got to, a day. Well, one, you know, uh, when I was in the program before, one of my counselors, said, you know, was saying, add up what you spend a day, times it by 100, times it by 10 for each year you drink you know and I'm, I got to figuring that out I could already bought four or five houses and you know property or you know just a waste of money you know yeah and uh, my wife she's got almost two and a half years and she lives in Denver right now so that's one of my main inspirations right there is my wife and I, we never had a sober relationship. Uh huh. So it's all going to be a new, it's starting over in a new beginning. So she's been sober two and a half years. Yeah. You've been sober a half year. Yeah. You got a trip planned out to visit? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, pretty quick. I'm just, I'm going to get my school started. And I wanted to get. Everything centered first, uh -huh. and then I can take my my time and go spend some time and go see my kids and my granddaughter and yeah, you know, and 
just looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like a day and night. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be gone for a little bit. I no, I that. mean day and night. The difference between drinking oh yeah, a gallon oh yeah, a day. yeah, yeah. So um, when you uh, when you drank a gallon a day, could you still walk around and have a conversation? Ninety percent of the time, yes. Because uh, most people, even a even a drinking person that drinks every night, if you drank a gallon, they'd just be done. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, it's not. It's not no, nothing to be proud of. Yeah. Uh, ten years ago, when I got my DUI, uh, my alcohol level, even it, it took an hour to get to the jail, and even then, when they gave me the test, it was six point seven, and I was normal. you you know, and <laughs> so they gave me level two. I, it's been ten years since I've had my license, so I'm able now. For the first time, I got a clean slate. And I'm not about to mess it up. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, um, you, you, let's see, what was I going to say? You, you've got, you, uh, I'll take a second here. License. Well, let me ask you this. In, okay, let, let's get your, let's get your story kind of, uh, kind of fleshed out here. Okay. Uh, which I'm going to kind of go over again, just to have the whole picture for everybody to see, All right. uh, and myself included. So sober for six months, <coughs> living indoors for three years. Mm -hmm. uh, you're up in Lakeport. You uh, live up Lake, uh, Lake Pillsbury. Lake Pillsbury. You got a place up there. <coughs> you're chopping wood for a living mm -hmm. for a store up there, yes. and you got a room up there. Yes. And um, but you were doing that while you were. They were letting you. They were employing you up there while you were drinking no. all day every day no 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 no. i just moved back up to, i haven't been up here the whole time oh okay i've been down here you were with your family while yeah. you were drinking indoors yes okay. and up there that, that's i don't drink uh-uh okay they don't that's, put up with that mm, no okay. i just you know they're giving me a chance to get my life together and i'm not about to mess that up okay you know this is too important to me yeah it's a new foundation that I've never experienced in my life. So it's like, of course, I'll be making a little bit of mistakes here and there yonder. But I know that I'm going to be centered out of this whole thing. And I'm going to keep that center. Uh-huh. And there nothing that's going to take my sobriety away. Uh-huh. You know, and uh, pretty soon I'm going to be driving, having my truck and... Things are now start starting to fall into place. It just it's taking a little bit of time. Yeah. And I'm I learn how to harness the patience a little bit to where I don't get uh how could I put it over exerted. Anxious? Anxious, over anxious. Uh huh. And wanting it come faster than it than it is. Because the minute I do that, I overlook things that are right in front of me. Uh huh. You know, and some sometimes when you overlook those things, you, you don't need to, you know. And so it's like I'm starting over in a new life that I've never had before. So it's something to... Never had before because you told me that you started drinking when you were 10. I was, I was in that bottle for 30 years. What uh, What did you drink when you were 10? I... Uh, I drank basically anything I could get my hands on. Uh, Canadian Mist. Uh, it just alcohol ran in my family, uh -huh. you know, for many years. So did you grow up in a family that was heavy drinkers? Yes. Uh, my father. Uh -huh. he, he used to be a drinker, but now he's he's got 25 years off the sauce. So your father hasn't drank for 25 years. So. And you've been drinking for 30. I've been drinking for 30, yeah. Uh-huh. So he got sober when you were a teenager. Yes. How and did he get sober? He just decided to stop. No he big had, crisis happened? No. Or? He just got sick and tired of it, I was guess. He, was he a heavy heavy? Yeah, I yeah, guess. Go ahead. I guess he saw how I was getting, and he was trying to give me a positive role model, you uh -huh. know, being a... a the real father that he is. Uh-huh. You see mm -hmm. him much? 
Uh, I haven't seen him in five years, but I talk to him all the time. Uh, he lives up in the Western Slope, uh, down by Grand Junction. Uh huh. And when I go back to see my wife, I'm going to go back to see him also. So, so you talked to him since you sobered up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he he's must. very proud. Uh, the whole town back there is rooting for me. Uh, Colburn, it's like a little bit smaller in Potter Valley. And there's everybody, like three churches. Everybody knows everybody? Yeah. There's three churches, two gas stations, and that's about it in a bank. It's a cow town. So they all know you because you were a teenager there. Well, I was I was grown. Yeah. I I spent all my time here and I moved to Colorado about when I was twenty one, twenty two, something around there. Uh huh. And and I stayed back there, got married. Uh my kids they're her kids but they're my kids. Uh huh. You know, and they're totally grown uh, my granddaughter she just turned five in November uh, I haven't seen her since she got out of the well when she got out of the hospital so I got all sorts of nice pictures of my kids and my family and you're gonna be able to have a relationship with yes. them that's quite and different that's, than and that's what I'm really looking forward to uh-huh you know and, uh, this is something that when I open my eyes up to a different world, it just, one that's gonna actually put me, my feet on solid ground. You know, like I said, there's no way in heck I'm gonna jeopardize that. So, you told me that you've never been diagnosed with any sort of uh, mental disorder? No. No bipolar, no manic depressive, no schizophrenia? No, my homelessness came from a lot of it I, I did it by choice because I, I just, I'm not an indoors type of person really. So you like the freedom or something? Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, you know, there's some of us out there that would like to get out off the street, but not knowing how to get to the programs or they're not strong enough to, you know, to, to take care of themselves. You know, I mean, some of them aren't strong enough to take care of themselves. And, I'd like to help out in any way I can, you know, and that's why I do what I do, you know. I mean, just because I'm indoors now doesn't change my my way of thinking about my family on the streets. Okay. Because they are my family. So you still you still have a lot of friends that live outside. <coughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Tell me what you th tell me what your opinion is of how many of those people suffer from some sort of mental issue that probably good, helps a, a little bit keeping them on the streets. You think half of the people out there or just a few of them or most of them? Or? There's nobody should be on the streets to tell you the truth. You know, I don't wish it upon nobody because it's a hard life. Uh huh. It's a very hard life and uh, I've seen it take lives. I've, you know, and it just isn't nothing pretty. Right. You know, and, uh, to answer your question on that under is uh there could be maybe about thirty percent, thirty five percent. Uh huh. Maybe but a third. Ma yeah. But the majority of the people they have a good level head on their shoulders. Uh-huh. You know. And they're just caught up in the bottle they're or the pill. Just caught up in society's you know, caught up in the yeah, caught up in the bottle and you know, and just don't know how to get out of it. Uh huh. And, but the, the strength that I've gained since I stopped drinking, I'm trying to channel it to help the ones that I love out there. Uh huh. You know, I'm doing anything I possibly can because that's just the way I was brought up. Have you gotten any work yet at the <coughs> food bank or in any of the programs? Because a lot of times when people sober up. Uh, no, because like I said, I cut wood for a living, so okay. I'm only down here taking care of things for school, then I'm heading back up home. Mm hmm. You know, and I come down and I take care of my moss, you know, during the week and then go back up. But right now I'm just getting everything focused for my fall semester. So is this the first time you're going into school? Yes. Okay, so this fall you're going to go into classes for the first time? Yes. Okay. Um, before, we get, before we get to that and what you're doing now with school and your mom and stuff like that, 
um, wanted to, wanted to wanted to finish painting this picture here. Started okay. drinking when you were ten. Grew up with a lot of drinking around you. Yes. Uh, and then another question that occurred to me is, you said the whole town's rooting for you back there in Colorado. Now, did you run around crazy in that town? And that's why, for, for a few years in your early 20s yeah, or something, I, well, and so they I all kind of know who you are. And yeah, I kind of put my dad's truck in the side of a bridge. Put your dad's truck in the side of a bridge? Yeah, and I drove yeah. it home. That'll yeah, get some attention in a small town. Uh, yeah, the constable wasn't too happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my dad wasn't too happy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Now that I know they quit drinking, they're, they're just giving me all the prayers. My dad goes to church quite a bit. Uh huh. So. Okay. They, well, it's good that you talk to your dad. Yeah, I, I keep in touch with my family. Yeah. Yeah, it must have been hard for him to see you drinking a gallon a day. Oh yeah, it was turning. It was, you know, I got thinking about it, especially when I quit. It's like, how many people did I actually hurt besides myself? You know, uh -huh. and that's a tough one to to gnaw it, you know, I mean, but for any healing, you have to face everything straightforward. You can't run from it because the minute you run from it, there you are. So the problems are right at your feet, you know, and you, yeah, I just, I'm so glad I came out of the alcohol. I mean, it just showed me a whole new way of life. Let's talk about that for a minute. Let's talk about your first couple weeks sober. That must have been quite an uncomfortable. I was in the hospital a few times. Doing what? DTN, seizing, seizing up. Seizuring. Seizuring and. And just uh, physical pain. Physical pain. Yeah, it was. Uh -huh. It was rough. I'm not going to lie to you. It For was, a couple it weeks. It was damn rough. Uh huh. For at least the first month. For at least the first month, you were so pickled. Yeah, oh, I was month. beyond that pickle jar. I was in a freaking, <laughs> I was in that mason jar, about right? Yeah, uh, so it took a month for you to fully be able to just wake up in the morning mm -hmm. and not be seizuring or shaking. And not shaking, not, not, you know, and actually being able to eat a normal breakfast. Okay, so you were able to eat a normal breakfast after a month. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or whatever, something yeah, like that. Yeah, you know, it's, everybody's body's different. Right, You right. know, but... Uh, and then how about your head, your mental space? <coughs> like that oh, month. I've gotten that back. You, you've gotten that back, but it probably wasn't back the first month because you were so. No, uh, yeah, I was lost. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm still kind of, you know, I, I don't urge for that drink. But I'm just, I'm so tuned on getting my life together that sometimes I'll overlook the small things, you know. And Give me an example. Uh. Just, you know, uh, I guess you might call it mountain time. I don't have a perception of time sometimes, and I overlook some of the things that I need to get done, and I know better in my heart I need to get done. Uh -huh. and one thing I've learned since I got sober is I learned to look at the whole pie, but I learned to break it up into pieces. You know, and I try to set three goals a day for myself, positive goals uh -huh. a day. So, you know, I mean... That way in my heart, I know I did a good job that day. Uh huh. Was that a tool that you learned from yeah, AA? From AA, yes. Uh, set three goals and do them. It was my own personal opinion, you know. Uh, but AA has given me the strength to find out who I am inside. Uh huh. And given me the tools that I need to progress. Uh huh. Did you and do much? Were you f much friendly with AA during your drinking times? Yes. So you've been. It's no new friend. You've been with AA for yeah, a long time. Yeah, I've been with AA for a while. Okay. And so, uh, so you drank from age 10 to age 39, <coughs> basically. Yeah. And um, let, let, let's hear about what happened last year that made you not take a drink that next day. Well, we ha I have a good friend out there yonder. His name was uh, Ron Patrell. And he used to call him Yosemite Sam. He looked like Yosemite Sam, you know. And we partied together. Uh, we drank many moons. And when I heard he died in November, well, it was before Thanksgiving, uh, 
me and him got together and we were talking and he kept asking me to get off that bottle, you know, and I I was shining it on. When he was he was sick and when dying. When he was sick, when he was dying, and I, and then when I heard he died, that's when I stopped. I went cold turkey all the way. I I go, I just said hell with it. If I'm meant to die or I'm meant to live, just do what you will with me, God. You know, show me the way. And here I am. Uh huh. Yeah. And I I I kept that promise, and. I just, it's been really hard watching all your friends and family just basically die right in front of you because of something stupid. You know, I mean, alcohol to me is nothing but, <laughs> it's, uh, it's been my worst enemy for many years. And I just won't go back to that life. It killed, it killed a lot of people in the last couple of years? Oh, yes. A lot of young people in their 40s and 50s. Yes, uh, we just lost uh, David Reagan not too long ago, too. And, yeah, just too many people over fucking stupid. Excuse my French. It's all right. Over something stupid. Yeah. yeah. You know, and well, it's hard to quit. I lost my stepfather because of alcohol. You, you lost your stepfather. How long ago was that? Oh, about 10 years ago. 10 years and he was a good guy to you? Yeah. Uh-huh. And him and me ma were married, oh, shit, 15 years. Uh-huh. You know, and, uh, yeah, I just, if there's anything I got to say out there, your honor to anybody is keep the faith. It'll take you far. Uh-huh. You know, and you make up your mind to do something, keep it. Cause it's, it may not look it right now, but I'm getting all my stuff in a row right now. Yeah. For when I can, uh, I'm getting ready to put my call, my, my daughter through, uh, my granddaughter through college. I'm setting up a fund for, for that. Uh huh. A uh, couple bucks every week. Throw in a couple uh, bucks every week. Yeah. So she can, well, I'm going to set it up where she'll have a college fund. Yeah. That's, I've got one for my kid. Every time I get a couple bucks, I th yeah. couple bucks I throw it in, and it compound interest. And the next thing you know, I, I like to say that by the time he's in, he's three years old, you know, yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. your granddaughter's five. Yeah. So uh, by the time he's in college, uh, he'll be a million bucks. Yeah. He'll be able to afford <laughs> the first year of college. No doubt. That's what it'll cost. <laughs> it costs her. Oh yeah, no doubt. I'm crazy. Yeah. I just so know. keeping the faith and having people so so it just wore down on you. Just person after person yeah, in your I, association. I hit rock bottom. I couldn't go no further. You hit rock bottom because of sadness of people dying Everything, around you? Everything. You know, I mean, my seizures, watching people die, you know. And it's just, I'd rather help. Yeah. Than I would sit back and just not do anything. Yeah. Did you know, you? I just can't, I can't see that in a person. Uh-huh. You Did, know. Do you have a seizure every day or every week? I used to. You used to, have to I, drink I, a seizure every day. Just drink till you had a seizure every day, pretty much. Oh, I was having 15, 20 seizures a day. Really? At some point. I mean, I was... Did you know that the you Kaya were The Kaya Valley them? Medical Center was my best friend there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I was their worst enemy. They spent a lot of, <laughs> they spent me, a lot of money on you, huh? Uh, I, had to, uh, I have to thank the hospital. They're angels. They're, they're just... Yeah. They're unbelievable. Yeah. They see me through the worstest times in my life. Uh huh. And now they're seeing me progress, and I owe that to them. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, part of the system helping to keep you, keep you going. Yeah. So. Well, that's pretty lucky. I mean, there's, there's. I'm, I'm pretty impressed uh, that you're a year and a half that you never. What was the longest time you went sober, before, this so, stage here? Did you go a week? Three months. Three months. And how long ago was that? About seven years ago. Seven years ago or so, you managed to go three months. So, so yeah. you went through the DTs then, too. Yeah. And I went, went through all the harshness. I, mean, I figured, it, you know, I, either it's going to kill me or it's going to make me better. Uh-huh. So I just tossed the coin. You know, I was sick and tired of being sick. Uh-huh. 
So I said, no more. So seven years ago, you managed three months, which is pretty good. And um, what happened to make you slip back? Just drank a beer one day or what happened? Mm. I didn't want to back then. I was, I thought in my own heart, I was forced into it. I didn't understand the concept of sobriety and what it could do for me. I just wasn't ready. You know, I'm playing a simple fact. I wasn't ready. Uh-huh. Now I'm around, now I'm, I'm ready and I'm gunned up and I'm going full force with this. How have you found the services in Ukiah to be helpful or not? Uh, I really don't use them. Okay. But you I'm not saying that they're, I don't know that much about them, but I do know people that use them and there are some good programs out there. I just don't know about them very much. So you don't go, you've never been to Buddy Eller? You never spent the night at Buddy Eller? No, I spent one night there. But, you but that was years ago, that's right after Betty Eller passed away. Uh-huh. You know, and... You never all checked all into good. Ford Street? No. Go to the food bank? Oh, I go to the food bank now. Plowshares? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I go to the food bank, I go to Plowshares. Uh-huh. But mainly I just stay up on the mountain when I can, you know. Uh-huh. But... Uh, yeah, what I'd like to see, what Ukiah really needs, is a regular detox center, uh-huh. you know, for the people that are, you know, drunk and stuff, something like Ford Street, you know, I mean, instead of taking them to jail, you know, you start something up like Ford Street, you know, or something, you know, and instead of filling up the drunk tanks for full, you know, and just keeping them full. I mean, that's how that's how they ran it in Denver, and it, it seemed to work out pretty good. Okay, so Denver is a town of two million. Yeah. And they had a really substantial detox center. Yeah, it's just it's just something to you know. I mean, it, it would knock out so much unnecessary problems. Drama. Drama. That's yeah. what you said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would just knock it out. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know and. And we just have too small a one of those in this town, the, the Ford Center. Isn't the Ford Center uh, set up for more narcotics than alcohol, or is it it's, both? A, it's, uh, it's for everything. Okay, it's for everything. It's for detoxing. Yeah, it's for detoxing. But they uh-huh. just need something a little bit bigger, is all I'm saying. You know, is yeah. all I'm suggesting, you know. Sure, I mean, sure. It's the first time I've ever been on TV, so I'm yeah. just kind of like... No, <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. You know, no, I, I really yeah. appreciate you coming in and talking. Oh, that's talking. not a problem. I mean, I help in any way I can. This is basically, you know, the whole concept of the show is to basically just take a look at how life is for homeless folks. I mean, there's several hundred homeless folks or however many there are in Yeah, there's, there's quite a few, but you know what? A lot of us, you know, we have our own gig, you know, to make money, a lot of recycling and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, there are people out there that are willing to work, more than willing to work. Uh-huh. It's just... Works is so hard to find right under, you know. I yeah. mean, it's... Well, you know, one of the things you were telling me, you were, you were saying that uh, that some people choose to be homeless and some people wish Her, they were in an apartment yeah. and just can't get it together to get, get it, that first, right. first last deposit or it's just a little keep bit. the job or... Yeah, some of them are, you know, they're not physically fit to keep a job. Because of drugs or just because, just because of disabilities? Of disabilities and, uh-huh. you know, and... Stuff like that. I mean, I wish there was a way that they could, you know, it's like the Section 8. I'm trying to get that right now, but I don't know how to go about that. But I'm just, I'm trying. See, I'm even trying to program this myself. I'm going around asking because I'm on a low income, too, also. Now, Section 8, I thought that was a mental disability thing. No, that's no, a no, physical, that's housing. But Section 8 for housing, I thought that was just for mental disabilities, but it's also for the cerebral palsy that you have? Oh, I could get it because of my, because I was born with this. Right, so you can get Section 8 because of a physical disability? Yes. Okay, I, th- I thought for some reason that Section 8 was just for mental disabilities. Well, a disability is a disability. Okay, sure, you know, sure. I mean. So, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know where to point you, um, except for just ask everybody that you see, like ask at the food bank and you'll say, oh, I don't know. Ask at Buddy Eller, I don't know. Ask at Ford Street and they'll say, Go to this office. Yeah. You know, have you have you been pointed right to the office and the papers? Well, I just have to, I have to get my butt down there and go get her done. That's what 
So you know what office to go to? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. What, what is that office? I don't even know. It's right across from, um, I know where it's at. I'm just trying to think of the name of it. It's right across from the fairgrounds on this side. Right across. It's from directly the across from the fairgrounds. There's a stereo store there and there's a TV store. It's on this side of the video store. I okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what office that is. I can't remember. Oh, office of opportunity. Opportunities or something like this. North Coast Opportunities? North Coast Opportunities. That's what, that's where it is. Is that what it is? Uh-huh. Okay. So North Coast Opportunities is for Section 8 paperwork. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I need a list. You know, I do this show and I talk to a lot of people. How long have you been doing this show now? Just, you're my fifth person, fifth guest. Oh, yeah. Right, right on. But I, I really enjoy it. You know, I like getting to know you guys and I get like to hear the stories, the hard stories, the good stories. Um, so, you know, one good thing that we can focus on for a minute, you say that you like the outdoors and that a lot of times homelessness is a choice for you. I mean, that's kind of, that kind of puts a positive, that's kind of a positive way to look at it. Yeah, that's the way, I, that's the way I've always been. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, God forbid I don't like being out in the rain. Sure. You know, when it's overbearing. When it rains for six months out of the year here? Yeah, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I mean, that's when I choose to be indoors, but when it comes to the summertime and stuff like that, uh -huh. you know, I stay outdoors as much as I possibly can. Yeah. So you, yeah. So you still, do you ever stay out at the tracks with all your ba your buddies, oh, your yeah. family? Oh, and yeah. Just no because I'm indoors doesn't mean that I don't, you know, just because I'm indoors, I don't change the, my attitude towards them because uh -huh. I'm indoors. I don't think I'm better than you. Uh, yeah. Now, you know, that's just not right. Now, a half a year uh, sober, you know, summer's coming on. It's tis the season to, like, hang out outside and have sleep outs all the time and, mm -hmm. you know, no harsh uh, ripping winds and rain and everything like this. Um, have you yet, I mean, how do you approach people that you see are really killing themselves quickly? Do you proselytize much or do you mention it a little I bit? I tell them straight up, blunt. You're not doing good, son. Uh huh. You know, I mean, why why beat around the bush about it? Yeah. You know, especially the ones I care about and I love. You know, I'll stand up and I'll say, hey, man, you're not looking too good. You know, let me help you or something. You know, I mean. Uh huh. And that's basically what I. You know, I mean, a lot of people don't understand where I come from. You know, where I'm coming from on this. But it's just the way I was raised up. You know, is when you see somebody sick or something like that, you don't turn your blind eye. Uh huh. You know, I just it doesn't make me feel good in my heart. Now, if you're hanging out with six people, when you're hanging out, are you the only sober one? No. Okay. I have a few people down there just because you know. I mean, they won't drink or nothing. Uh -huh. They don't get all. No, I stand up for my friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. So they're so not everybody's. Uh, partying all the time. No, there's a few people like you on oh your yeah. side of the fence. Oh yeah, that are going clean and yeah. Uh -huh. So they kind of look up to us, you know. We give them inspiration. Uh huh. You know, by being sober, you know, and yeah. You know, it's like it makes you feel good. Yeah, yeah. You know, and have have you have you had any luck? Have you gotten anybody to check into the Ford Center? Oh. Uh. I guess that's what you do in this town, right? That's the only option? I guess it, I just, it's their choice if they want to go. I sure. You know, I'm not sure. going to. I mean, you don't have you know, to push them, but I'm you could say, pushing. hey, you could point it out to them and say, hey, it's right over there. Yeah. You ever done that? Also, several times. Uh-huh. You know, and some, some, you know, some of the people that I help, they've moved on and, you know, and they keep in touch now and then. Uh-huh. And they're doing good. You know, I don't... Everybody slips up now and then. It's when you recognize that you are slipping up. That's the key right there. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. saying, you know, you, you got to give... A, you got to give what you freaking think up here a chance to work. Yeah. You know? And that's what I'm, that's what I'm learning in my sobriety is that... Patience is a virtue. Uh-huh. 
you know. So you just got some patience now that you didn't have didn't before. Didn't have before. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, and uh, your patience before was I need my breakfast vodka right now. Mm -hmm. That yeah. first thing was that bottle. Yeah. And that's not the case anymore. Yeah. Did you eat much when you were drinking a gallon no. a day? I, I got mean, you got to you got to eat a sandwich a day if you or you die, right? There was sometimes I wouldn't eat for three or four days. Uh huh. You know, I'd be that pickled. Yeah. You know, and I sure don't miss that life. That's for damn sure. Yeah. No, it sounds pretty tough. Um. So, when you drank, were you violent drunk? Were you angry? No. I no. mean, there's at times I could have been because I blacked out. I heck, I don't remember, but I'd wake up in the middle of a field or something or cut black and blue and bleeding. Uh-huh. You know, I didn't know how in the hell I did it. So, yeah. So you don't saying. remember? Don't remember. But so. you weren't a notorious thrasher, drunk no. person? Har harmful to myself. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You ever, you ever get desperate and, like, steal or no. do any criminal stuff like that? No. Uh-uh. Because you didn't need to? I didn't need to. I always panhandled or I always recycled for monies. Yeah. How much money do you make a day on a good recycle day? Can you make 20, 40 bucks? 30, you know, the, I made about 45, 50 bucks. That's the most I've made in a day. Okay. But what I usually basically do is I go out and I'll wash windows over at the co-op. Uh -huh. You know, and they gave me permission to, them in the laundry mat, uh -huh. gave me permission to be there. And I just go wash car windows and, or then I'll go do landscaping, you know, and go door to door and just see if they, they need some work done. So you go door to door and ask people if they need their... Yeah, if it looks like their yard needs to be worked on and then they go, well, they quote me what price and I just say, uh, whatever you feels good in your heart. Uh-huh. And it, it seems to work out pretty good. I'm able to stash some money a little bit, so... Were you able to do that kind of door to door work or windshields when you were drinking? I did for a while, yeah. Uh-huh. But then I just... I got off that habit, you know, I mean, I had to totally break down from the old life and start a new one. Uh-huh. And I'm still working on that myself right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, 30 years is a long, long ride, f and, and a half a year is sort of just the beginning of that. Oh, it's, I haven't even hit the barrel head yet. Do you have any sort of, like, safety line if you slip and drink for a week and then all of a sudden I got to call somebody, I got to oh, yes. call my yes, dad yes. or I got to call my, is there anybody that. Yes, you I have several people. Oh yeah? Yes. Well, that's helpful, huh? Make sure that, yeah. That's how AA works. You have a sponsor, right? Yeah. Is that part, Sponsors is that one of your and people? coaches and yeah. Uh-huh. So uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for AA in those rooms right there. If you wouldn't be here if it weren't for AA in those rooms. Yep. Yeah. You know, and uh, sure helped out my life a thousand percent. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're obviously in a really good place right now compared to where you were one year ago today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I was in that hospital about, oh, heck, five or six days out of the week for uh -huh. a while. Uh-huh. You know, that's why I say... Thank God for those people right there yonder. I mean, they're my family in there. So there, so there's people in the hospital right now, DT, and probably every oh, probably day there's somebody maybe. in there. Maybe. Yeah. Huh. You know, I mean, that's why. I, that's what I'm saying too. You know, it's like with the uh, detox center. Even the hospitals would be, you know, attached. Well, it's like, if not attached, but I mean. The treatment center, they have their own, they have everything right there to treat uh -huh. for, you know, DTs and all that. Uh -huh. And like I said, I couldn't stress it enough. You know, I mean, if I had the money, I'd, I'd do that. You know, I'd open it up in a heartbeat, you know, for the simple fact. Yeah. Because, you know, that way people don't feel pushed. They don't, how can I explain it? Uh, yeah, they just don't feel pushed into something that they don't want to do. Now, what you're referring to is the mandatory court-ordered? Yeah, that to too. I mean, I is mean, that what pushed is? Is that what you're talking about, pushed? Uh, no. No, what I'm saying is, like, 
when they go into, say like they go into the jails or they go into the uh, hospitals, they they don't have the, you know, especially when they're DTN. I know because I've went through it. There's just not enough people, you know, in the jail system or in the hospital system to to really care for the people that want to really quit drinking. You know, there's just not enough time and not enough resources. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd love to see that change. Yeah. I mean, it'd give more people inspiration to, to want to quit. Mm-hmm. You know, and not be treated like you did something bad. You know, I'm not saying anything like about, uh, you know, the jails or the hospitals or anything. I mean, it, there's just not enough darn freaking resources. To yeah, well, you know, they cut AODP this, this year. The, the county oh, did. Oh, did they? Yeah, they cut AODP oh, because wow. the county's simply out of money. You know, the county's laying off uh, yeah. e everything. And it's just, it, it really, you know, they're, they're, the, the sheriff's budget is threatened, which is public safety. And then public health is, is getting cut because the monies they just have less money than last year just simple as that they have they possible. have 200 bucks instead of 300 so you know you got to lay some people off and yeah and, and it really matters because this you know the uh, uh, aodp you know the sheriff handles drunk tank yeah and he's uh, uh, he, it's going to be more stressful for him to do that job and then, and then the, uh, the 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 sober up yeah the, the health department side of things they're going to have less people, just like you said, in the yeah, hospitals. It's, and there, the it's just getting crazy. There's not enough. There's not yeah. enough resources. Yeah, but um, but I do know that I've heard some people testify uh, to the county and say, "I would be dead if it weren't for AODP," and now I'm a counselor for AODP and I've been sober for five years or 10 years yeah. and now I'm helping other people. So don't cut our funding because this is a miracle what happened, what's going on exactly. here. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I, that I feel, <laughs> I wish there was more people out there like that. Yeah. You well, know. there's a couple and they need all the help they can get. So as your journey of soberness uh, continues, you know, you'll, you'll probably bump into those people and have some conversations with them and and have perhaps an opportunity to you know do yeah. some good work now that you're capable of it yeah oh no doubt yeah yeah that's interesting so we've got about 15 minutes left um let's see what else did we not cover so it sounds like you know uh oh, we, we haven't talked about your mom yet uh it, it sounds like you've got a good relationship with your dad uh, at this point, you had some good conversations mm -hmm. with them recently uh, since you've been sober, and that sounds pretty promising. And you've got plans to to head out there. Uh, I want to talk about your school uh, a little bit, your ideas there in the fall, and how about your mother? Tell me about what you're doing. You're up in Lake Pillsbury, but you come down all the yeah, time. I come down all the time. Uh, she's got COPD. What is CODP? Oh, it's a. I don't know exactly what the name for it is, but it's. It has to do with lung restrictions. Okay, so it's a resp It's a respiratory disease. Respiratory disease. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it's just stage four. And love her to death, you know, and just kind of like taking care of her and whatnot. You know. Yeah. So how, uh, is she a drinker or is she no, 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 no. No? She don't drink, she don't smoke. Even when you were growing up? No. It was just more of my dad. He was the alcoholic. Okay, so it's just yeah. you and your dad. Huh? Yeah. Um, so your mom, uh, you come down and take care of her. How old is she? Uh, 66. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And she's here in Ukiah? Yeah. Yeah. Just run and get groceries and take care of the house a little bit. Yeah. Check in on her. Uh-huh. That's good. Okay. Getting ready to go pull some weeds over there after I get done here. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, so tell me about school. You're, how, how, where did you go to s talk to people about doing the paperwork and getting signed up for classes, GED, you said? Oh, yeah, well, I went directly to the college, to the financial aid, uh -huh. and uh, 
they set me up they got me registered uh, now I just need to take there's three tests I need to take one is my aptitude test uh, and then there's a placement test and then there's one for my financial aid which is my GED test uh -huh. and then after that then I start uh, I'm doing my basics right now just basic math English getting brushed up on what I didn't get you know during high school uh -huh. then I'm gonna go to mechanics and uh, get my uh, AA in mechanics uh -huh. and just work it off from there and see eventually I want to I'm gonna become a, a heavy equipment operator okay I'm gonna get certified for heavy equipment uh -huh. but I want to just brush up on my regular education first right you know I just start from the beginning because if I don't start from the beginning all I'll do is just cheat myself you know and I don't want to do that so you're gonna go in get some get remember your math yeah and uh, and reading and writing and, and whatnot and then you're gonna take mechanics you can take yeah, like auto mechanics auto uh, mechanics uh-huh and then maybe diesel mechanics just because if I'm going to come up you know heavy equipment operator I got to get to know the how everything runs and stuff in case it breaks down or something like that and just yeah I got to be basic familiar knowledge. with the machine yeah yeah so it's all it's just basic knowledge right now did you tinker were you a mechanic or you tinker at all with a small little bit engines? here and there bikes nothing really nothing really nothing really to, yeah. nah. what were your hobbies how did you spend the day back in the in the years when you were drinking a gallon of vodka a day at the lake and the river just chilling fishing fishing <laughs> fishing yeah. a little bit of hunting uh-huh not you hunting but uh just a lot of fishing uh-huh so you weren't like busy tinkering a bunch of engines or doing no. mechanics and that's and just something i've always wanted to do and it's a good you know it's a good tool to have uh-huh you know i mean you break down the middle of nowhere especially i live out in the middle of nowhere so i got to be able to fix anything that breaks down uh-huh you know that's just the necessity yeah so you live in the middle of nowhere but it's still a little store where there's yeah. a few other people around and stuff yeah 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 it's oh lake pillsbury it's is like it everything's run off generators is it that store that's right on the right by the lake mm -hmm. right as you go in yeah. yeah 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 i've been there right there i've been there once or twice um okay so you got school you're going to start in the fall you went right up to the school who sent you to the sc who gave you that idea myself uh-huh because i just you said ged let's do yeah, it let's do it uh-huh and you went so right up to the college yep went right up to college and <laughs> asked let me in. just go do this do this and do this and you'll be you'll be all right uh-huh I got all my grants are approved right now. I just got to take those three tests and uh -huh. I'm off to school I go. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I went to school and loved every minute of it. Oh, a lot yeah. of fun. A lot of fun. A lot of work. And <coughs> I don't know. I enjoy reading. Yeah, reading. They make you read like crazy. So, yeah, I, I liked it. How, can you read? Yeah, I can read and write. And uh -huh. you, know, you managed to learn how to read and write. Even though you started drinking at 10. Yeah. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I fried a lot of brain cells, and I'm getting them back now. Yeah. 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 Wow. Fried a lot of brain cells. Yeah. Can't believe. I can't believe a person can drink a gallon a day for 20 years. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. Now all I do, I get my, my medical marijuana, and that's what I do. Uh-huh. You know, and that encouraged me from drinking. That's helped me tremendously. Oh, really? Yes. Well, that's very interesting. So because they call marijuana a drug, it's not a drug. It's a medicine. Uh huh. Uh huh. I yeah, mean, a lot it, of people say that around here. It helped me. Now, a lot of people use it completely. as a drug, though, because they just drink and smoke and take crack and take well, pills. Well, they say it's a gateway to all drugs. Uh huh. They call it the gateway drug, but to me, it's not. I've been smoking it all my life, just about. So, how much? Were you just a regular <coughs> smoker of, of cannabis uh, when you were doing your heavy drinking? Mm -hmm. just puff puff joints yeah, also? So, yeah, I used to get stoned too. Okay. Now, so h now that you're in the sober phase for the last half year, how does that relate now? You said it actually helps you. It helps me. It helps me eat. So it helps it me. Helps, helps you eat. The pain. Helps I live the pain. in constant pain. Why do you live time. in constant pain? I have cerebral palsy. Okay. And then I have an ACL tear 
in my right knee. Uh huh. How long ago did you get an ACL tear? It's been about two and a half years. Okay. So hopefully here pretty quick. I'm going to be getting my surgery. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just waiting on getting my surgery. I got to go through that physical therapy. And, and that'll help take the pain away. Yeah. Uh huh. Because that's one thing that I'm afraid of right there is losing my mobility. Uh huh. You know. Yeah. I mean, if it happens, I'll overcome it. And I'm not going to let it happen. <laughs> yeah, you're going to work. That's a that's one thing to keep on. <coughs> take care of your leg. Make sure you don't yeah. have to. Yeah. You, you told me uh, before we started, uh, you said you mentioned something about your drinking days of uh, you died three times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's hear a little bit about that. That was, that was pretty crazy. Uh, I was in Denver and I was staying in a loft up in the up above in the garage. It's about a 17 foot drop, 15, 16, something like that. And I fell in mid seizure, but it's the only thing that saved my. I was clinically dead then for seven minutes. Uh, I don't remember, really remember much. Uh, got to see some of my family, whatnot. But anyway. Got to see some of your family? Yeah, on the other side. Oh, uh, really? Mm hmm. Tell me about that a little bit. Well, I saw my my great my great aunt, my my grandma, my great grandma, and it just said it's not your time yet. And it was on the ocean, on the sand. But you were and able to I, say hello. I was able to say hello. Then I woke up. Then you woke up. And ever since then, I might say I have angels on my side. Uh huh. So that's where I get a lot of my positive energy and a lot of my my attitude that I have now. Uh huh. Because I I learned to respect and take like excuse me and take life and look at life with a totally different aspect, and that is how much respect you have for yourself is carry you so far. It's hard to put into words. Yeah. You know. But it, I do have my lifeline attached to me That's to, to keep me out of the darkness. Uh huh. I wish that would be the booze. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of. So booze. I just, I, I guess you might say it's appreciation of life. Uh huh. And Before just, you had a little less of that. Yeah. You didn't have quite the appreciation of life that you do now. Exactly. You know, because I didn't understand it. Now I do. You yeah. know what I mean. It, well, I'd, I'd so. call it pretty impressive, you know, some luck in there probably, mm -hmm. but, you know, for, mm -hmm. for you to go a year and a half, you know, that's, I mean, uh, to, for you to go a half a year, yeah. 190 days, that's, uh, that's pretty, pretty good. good. Uh, now, you did, you did say that you had a slip. Yeah, I, I slipped, and, and I had a couple of drinks, and that was about eight days ago. Uh-huh. But I picked it up. Mm -hmm. Time's only time. Tools I always have. Yeah. You know. So you lost I, your time. I just lost as my As far time. as stone sober. Yeah. Your 190 but, days. But, but I didn't you still lose have the your tools. tools. Right. I still had right. tools. So. So it's, was that kind of scary for you looking back? Like, whoa, I just did well, that. I, no. I didn't like it because I started getting a little tipsy, and I go, I just, I like having full control of my movements. Uh huh. You know, I just, I, I'm not going back to this. There ain't no way. Yeah. Not waking up being sick or waking up shaking or. Yeah. I mean, that's why I smoke my weed because it keeps me at a level keel, you know, and it helps me. Do you ever, do you ever get the urge to drink, and then you just smoke instead? Yeah. Uh huh. You know, I, I still have urges to drink, but not overbearing enough where I yeah. want. Yeah. I just go ahead and I'll smoke me a joint. Yeah. No big thing. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. helps with the pain of your it knee. It helps with my pain in my knee and it helps out tremendously. Uh huh. You know, and the police and all them, they know that I got it legal so they don't mess with me on that. Uh huh. You know, I the mean. The county and the sheriff? Yeah. I they, mean, the, the city and yeah, the county? Yeah. They know I smoke. Uh huh. You know, as long as I don't smoke it out on State Street or. You know, and I'm trying to duck, you know, or something. Just being respectful about it, Uh huh. you know. And they all know you. Yeah. Did so they pick you up a lot? And they used in? to. Yeah. When I was drinking. No. But they didn't pick you up for beating on people or getting beat no, on? No, 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 no. 
they just picked you up for being uh being drunk in public yeah just flopping all around yeah you know because they're good they go come on william get in the back we're taking you in all yeah. right <laughs> you know <laughs> i mean it ain't nothing to laugh at but now i look at it i can do nothing but laugh uh -huh. yeah, i mean i was that way actually really for real yeah yep <laughs> you know i go wow what would they tell you you know like they're, they're they're even proud of me right now, you know. And they're they're saying good job, uh -huh. you know. They don't mess with me no more because I don't give them no reason to mess with me. I don't do nothing wrong. Yeah, you know I'm open about smoking my weed, you know. And if you want to call that a crime, I guess I'm a criminal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you well, know. Not around but these parts, apparently. No, everybody's pretty lenient. Getting more lenient, it seems like. Oh, they could they could be used for so many different directions. It's unbelievable. Mm hmm but that's between here or there yeah let's see we got about three minutes left okay yeah. well uh our guest today uh remind me you know t i gotta mention this every 10 minutes i like to mention this every 10 minutes i'm trying but i forgot about it uh uh our guest today was william giddings and uh, he's a ukiah resident he's been here his whole life and uh we we just we just kind of heard his whole story right now He's 40. He's going to turn 41 in October this year. He's made it 190 days as, uh, at this point uh, yeah. of being sober, and that's coming off of 30 years where for the last, how many, 20 of that, you, you were drinking uh, a gallon a day. He was up to a gallon a day, which is easily gotten by collecting $20 worth of recyclables, recyclables or $20 worth of panhandling, and you've got your gallon, enormous amount of alcohol. He, I'm he lucky got to into, be alive. What's that? I'm lucky to be alive. He says he's lucky to be alive. Uh, he had all kinds of time in the hospital, all kinds of time getting picked up in the, and put in the drunk tank over and over. And, and so now he's... He's got a new situation, a new, uh, just a new percep perspective on life. Uh, kind of picked him up at a lucky time. I, if I had picked him up a year ago, it would have been a different interview. We would have talked about some different things and uh, would have got some <laughs> different versions of these oh, yeah. stories. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just want to really thank you for coming in. Uh, never oh, been yes. on television Anytime. before and sharing yeah. your story with us. and. And I don't know how much to say good luck, man, but that is big deal. And so yeah, I, I hope all that... All I can say is when you put the effort into it, when you fully put the effort into it, the fruits are bearable and they're very fruitful. Yeah, yeah. Well, With hard work becomes great reward. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, we'll have you back on the show in six months. All no right. matter what happens, if you... You know, you know where we are. Come say hi anytime. Yeah, most and, definitely. And we'll see see how the progress goes. See how yeah. this town treats you. See how the how you know it sounds like the cops are are friendly now and yeah, oh, and, yeah. and the yeah. services are out there. You're going to school and everything. So yeah, doing good. Yeah, great. I'll definitely keep up the yeah, keep up the progress. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks a lot, William. Yeah, for most on the definitely. Show. Oh, most definitely. So yeah, uh, this is Jason. I'm going to sign out. Uh, roll that. Uh, I think we got about a minute left. Roll a couple seconds of that promo. And uh, thanks all for watching. And we'll see you next week. Hello. Yeah,